Hi, I'm Tim Foss. I'm making some recent YouTubes on, of all things, forage book paintings. Do have a look at the links at the end to find out a bit more about those. I wanted to deliver some information without using a voiceover. Just to let the images do the work. The best way of doing this is with captions, on what is generally called the lower thirds. You see lower thirds all the time in interviews and news broadcasts. It can be as simple as a bit of text over the image, up to complex animated graphics. I've covered this in its basic form earlier, and if you want the basics, check out that tutorial first. But for this project I wanted something that was a bit more interesting than text fading in and out, but not too complex to be distracting. So I came up with this. An icon image that moves up into view and the text rolls out of it and stays on screen for a few seconds and then everything reverses out of sight again. The image can be really anything you want. To look good it should have fairly defined edges. Fading edges and the more complicated shapes don't really work well. You can do some of this using Vegas add-ons from New Blue and the like, but it can be done well using just normal Vegas tools. In your image editor, create a PNG canvas of the, about the same width and height ratio of the picture that you're going to use, say at about 400 pixels. This one is 450 by 350. Now take the image you want and pop it into the middle, but at around two thirds to half the total canvas size. Now save it all as a transparent PNG. This may seem a bit complicated, but it makes it so much easier to make the image small enough to work with when you get to the video. Create a track by right clicking in this area and drop the image into it. Stretch it to about 12 seconds, which should be long enough to leave the text on to read it and also time for it to appear and disappear. Now to the text. Create a new text track on your timeline by right clicking in the track list area. Go to Media Generator and Text and Titles and make it about 10 seconds long and place it centrally under the image. There's an awful lot of options to play around with to fine tune the text, but here's a basic setup. Select a font, preferably a simple one like Arial, and a font size say around 14 points. Type in your text around the sort of length that it's going to work on screen. Choose a colour, one that will show up against your image. If it's generally dark, go for white or slight tint. If it's generally a light image, use black or dark shade. You can stretch or compress the text and change the line spacing here. An outline is very important as this puts a line around the letters so they can always be read no matter what the image is doing behind it. Set it to black for light text or white for dark text. Set the outline width to say around 3 or 4 for this text size. So you're ready to place it on screen as it'll look when it's stationary. Move the text in the preview window so it's in the right place and indented from the edge. Use the pan crop to do the same for the image so it's just left of the text. Adjust the sizes of the text and the image till you're happy with them. Now to animate the image. Click on the event pan crop and click the lock on here. Now move the event marker in by about a second. Right click on it, copy and go to a second before the end. Right click and paste it in. Now select vertical movement only. Now click to the very start of the timeline and add an event point by pressing plus here. Click on that event point and adjust the position 
so it's just out of sight. Right click on the mark again to create a copy and go to the very end and paste the copy there. Now play it and it should be fine. To animate the text, first unclip Keep Aspect Ratio and select only Horizontal Movement. Now click on the event marker. Pull the left hand edge in till the text appears to vanish under the right edge of the image. Now move the whole window so the text is nicely clear of the image. Now move the marker two seconds in, right click on it and make a copy and paste it two seconds from the end. Now go to the start of the timeline, insert a new marker and click on it. Move the window to the right till the text disappears. Right click on the master, copy it and paste the copy right at the very end of the timeline. Now you just need to group the two together by control clicking and selecting them both and press G. And for more captions, all you have to do is copy this group, paste it to where you want it and change the text. Try and keep the text lines around the same length. But if you do need some short or longer, reposition them using generated media. Yeah, well, that's about it. Frankly, I wish I'd done all this before I started working on the Forage project. It does take time and care to set up the first one, but after that you can use it time and time again with different texts, different images and different timings on different projects. If you found this a bit complicated, check out the more basic lower third video as an introduction. If you like this, give it a like, of course, why not subscribe for more?